Joe Marino and Kyle Krabs here to recap the final practice of the Senior Bowl. It's the South team recap, and uh, let's get into who the best players that we saw on the field with. Kyle, who was impressive to you? Yeah, I really liked what I saw from UCLA's defensive tackle, Eddie Vanderdose, uh, number 47. He's had a really strong week the entire week and very disruptive, quick off the ball, uh, uses a lot of hand counters to, to win at first contact, and all of those things were on display again, both on inside run and in pass rush one-on-ones. So his ability to win quickly into his reps and his, his overall quickness and explosiveness makes him a really dangerous player along the line of scrimmage. You know, for me, the, the most impressive player was San Diego State cornerback DeMonte Kazee. I thought he struggled a little bit earlier in the week with uh, some of the uh, responsibilities he was asked to fulfill, lining up in off-man coverage and having to run vertical with receivers down the field. Today, he was asked to play up in, in, against the line of scrimmage in press technique, uh, able to use his hands, able to use his physicality to disrupt routes, and, and then really nice skills at the catch point. Had a nice pass breakup, so a much better day from the uh, San Diego State product. I really like Joe what I saw from uh, Texas A&M wide receiver Josh Reynolds who uh, started slow throughout the week uh, had some drops early on uh, looked like he was thinking a little too much in some of the route drills that the this uh, Cleveland Brown staff had them running early on on Tuesday uh, yesterday he still had a couple of drops but but was winning his reps with much more consistency uh, today everything came on he was moving at full speed uh, very aggressive attacking the ball in the air plucking the ball with his hands had a nice contest to catch right down here in the end zone near where we were against two defenders. Uh, some splash plays. He really looks the part. He might have build-up speed as far as his vertical ability, but he is a threat as a vertical receiver in his overall length. So a name to watch that will probably be a mid-round selection, but has some, some very good upside. Another guy that stood out for me was Alabama defensive lineman Dalvin Tomlinson. Uh, he really did a nice job of accentuating what he does well in the one-on-ones today. He's a physical guy, a lot of nice hand technique, a lot of power, and so when he's working all that going forward and attacking these interior offensive linemen, it's tough for them to uh, hold up and anchor against that. So he did a really nice job using his hands, using his power to work past offensive linemen, get into the backfield, and uh, uh, really under control. A nice day from the uh, Alabama Crimson Tide product. Yeah, another nice uh, performance from a defensive lineman was Villanova's uh, Tano Pasignan. He had very, very effective inside rushes. He was lined up at defensive end outside the outside eye of offensive tackles and was aggressive in working across face and attacking the B-gap. Uh, overwhelming amounts of power. He's 6'7", six, six, 280 pounds, very long arms. He's a handful for guys to handle with their inside counters just because of how much power he has and the ability that he has to use his hands to create that separation. So I thought he flashed early on Tuesday, had another couple reps on Wednesday that were very impressive, but today was the day where it felt like he really put it all together and overwhelmed some of these offensive tackles that he was going against today. Seems like one of the emphasis uh, today was red zone work, and uh, one of the players that I thought stood out quite a bit was Florida State cornerback Marquez White. Uh, did a really nice job of uh, staying balanced throughout the route stems to mirror the receiver, not let them get a leverage advantage, and then get his head around, locate the football, and compete. Uh, didn't allow a red zone catch, and, and uh, really impressive awareness to the football to uh, break on it, not lose track of his man, and, and, and not allow any touchdowns. So really nice day from uh, Marquez White, who is a player that, um, you know, Phil Savage himself uh, thought could really emerge this week. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that stood out about White for me was I didn't say his name out loud. And it's like offensive linemen are like that. Sometimes if you don't notice them, it's a good thing. Uh, the, the name that I was hoping to see some more of uh, today was Antonio Pipkin, uh, the small school Division II quarterback that is here. Uh, was hoping that his acclimation period may have just been a little longer. He seemed to struggle uh, with his progressions in the team drills and pe passing skeletons with seven on seven, uh, moving with quickness. And I saw some of that same issue today. Also saw him struggle to accurately place the ball down the field, had let some balls get away from him high. Uh, so Pipkin, I'll be interested to see uh, if he's able to game himself into a positive net performance from this game. Uh, I know some teams were particularly interested in him being here. You have to figure that's why somebody at such a small profile school uh, gets this invitation. So hopefully he can end his week on a high note on Saturday for the game. 
a player that underwhelmed me was Kentucky, Kentucky center uh, John Toth. Uh, really had a difficult time working his hand fits, very slow with his punch, and by the time he was able to, uh, to shoot his arms, the defensive linemen were past him. Oh, that happened time and time again. So a really difficult time just mirroring, getting in front of guys, shooting his hands, and then when he was able to engage, he didn't have the functional anchor to hold his ground, gave up a ton of push, and uh, a bad day for the Kentucky product again. Hopefully that looks better uh, on Saturday during the game. That's going to wrap for us here today from the South practice, and uh, we'll be back again to recap the game on Saturday.